scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 13 to 23. Listen for the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene, the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Great God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So it's Christmas time, and guess what my favorite movie is at Christmas? It's a wonderful life, right? You've seen it a hundred times probably. Most of you are probably familiar with that movie. Jimmy Stewart plays the main character, George Bailey. And Lionel Barrymore plays the cruel and stingy banker, Mr. Potter. George grows up in a very small town, very similar to Kernsville, uh, Bedford Falls, where almost everything is controlled by one person, one person controlling everything. That's Mr. Potter. George's dad is the head of a local building and loan, the Bailey Brothers Building and Loan. And the building and loan is the only bright, shining star in this little town. Now, George also has a mother and a younger brother. And George has a very uneventful young adult life in his eyes, but he is instrumental in saving the life of his younger brother and preventing the poisoning of another young person in town. George does not realize at the time how important his life is. He is ready to graduate from school and see the world. He tells his friends and family that he is ready to kick the dust off his shoes from this crummy little town because he has big dreams. Big dreams that include college and travel, building great things and doing great things. So George, for one last time, attends the high school dance where one of his friends asks him to dance with his kid sister, Mary. Now Mary is all grown up and beautiful, and George spends the evening dancing with Mary and walking her home. On the way home, they stop in front of a very large, old, abandoned home. And they both throw rocks at the home and make their wishes. Now, George tells Mary about his dreams, the grandiose dreams that he has about leaving this little town and going and doing great things. But Mary keeps her dream to herself. We find out later in the movie that she dreams of getting married, married to George, having children, 
staying in Bedford Falls and fixing up that old abandoned home. Well, suddenly a car pulls up to let George know that his father is critically ill. George has told his dad that he is not interested in staying in Bedford Falls to run the family business. He has dreams, big dreams, dreams of traveling, building, going to school. But his dreams are suddenly put on hold by a series of unexpected events. George's father dies very unexpectedly, and the fate of the Bailey brothers' building and loan falls on him. Now, George must decide whether he will stay in town and keep the building and loan running for the good of the townspeople, or go away to college and follow his own dreams, his own desires, his own will. George makes some very difficult decisions. He sacrifices his own dreams for the sake of others. He stays behind to run the building and loan and gives his college money to his younger brother, Harry, so that Harry can go to college. And Harry agrees to take George's place in four years when he comes home. So when George's brother, Harry, returns from college, he is married, and Harry's new father-in-law owns a big business and offers him a job with a very bright future. Now, Harry tries to tell George that he will stay and run the building and loan while George goes away to school, but George will have none of it. George refuses to listen. He sacrifices for the good of his younger brother and his future. George stays in Bedford Falls, continues to run the building and loan, and gets married to Mary. Now, George and Mary have big plans for a honeymoon. They have a lot of cash. They want to travel and see the world. But their plans are put on hold due to a run on the building and loan. So they take their honeymoon money and use it for loans for the good of the townspeople. They end up spending their honeymoon in that old abandoned home in Bedford Falls where they raise four children and live a very modest life. George and Mary live a life of sacrifice for the good of others. Now, George is sometimes frustrated with his choices, even though he knows in his heart he is doing the right thing. He sees one of his friends driving away in a chauffeured limousine while he goes and kicks the tires on his old broken-down car. He is frustrated with living in a drafty old home, and he is tempted by Mr. Potter to give up the building and loan and come and work at the bank for a large salary. But the biggest challenge comes from when George's Uncle Billy loses a large deposit. The bank examiner comes and he cannot account for the missing money. And George goes to Mr. Potter to beg for a loan. And Mr. Potter refuses and calls the police. George runs out of options and considers suicide because he has an insurance policy. That's when an angel of the Lord appears. Now, George is very depressed about his situation and tells the angel that life would have been much better if he, George, had never been born. George does not yet understand that a God-centered life, a life of sacrifice, is much better than one that is self-centered. The angel shows George that his life has been consequential. It has been important. It's been a wonderful life because it has been God-centered. George never forgot not to, George never got to fulfill his dreams, but he did spend his life building relationships, helping others in that little town to succeed. Did you have big dreams when you were young? Were you able to follow your dreams? Did your plans change? due to unforeseen circumstances. Sometimes our dreams are put on hold for reasons that we'll never know. Has God spoken to you in dreams and visions? Today we see part of God's gift, God's gift and plan for us through the dreams and visions of Joseph. We first meet Joseph when he is engaged to be married 
to a young virgin named Mary. And Joseph is a carpenter by trade and a man of few words. We know that he is faithful and righteous. He lives a God-centered life. Joseph is faithful to God, and his righteousness speaks for him. He probably has the same dreams that most of us have before we get married. He probably dreams about his beautiful bride, his future home, having children. But these dreams are about to be challenged. Challenged by events in the real world. Joseph's dream of being married to Mary is challenged by the fact that she is found to be pregnant. Now, Joseph is probably very disappointed. He probably feels that Mary has somehow cheated on him. What will he do? Now, Joseph, we know, is a righteous man, and he's considering a quiet divorce. He could have had Mary stoned to death for committing adultery, but Joseph receives God's word through an angel in a dream. Joseph's first dream has an angel of the Lord telling him that it is okay to take Mary to be his wife. The angel tells Joseph that the child was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and that he is to name the baby Jesus because Jesus will save the people from their sins. Now Joseph has a lot to think about. Does he believe the angel and the story about Mary's pregnancy? Is he anxious about being the adoptive father, the son of God? Will he abandon his own plans, his own desires, his own dreams of quietly divorcing Mary and finding someone else? Or will he follow God's plan? When we pray to God and God answers our prayer, sometimes the answer is not what we expect. How do we respond to an unexpected answer to a prayer? Joseph does not utter a word, but is obedient to God's word. Joseph takes Mary to be his wife and becomes the adoptive father of Jesus. Now, Joseph has a second dream soon after the birth of Jesus. The second dream is a warning, a warning to flee the wrath of King Herod. Now, Joseph at this time is probably wondering, what did I get myself into? I was just a simple carpenter, minding my own business, living in a little bitty town nobody cared about. And now I'm getting noticed by the king, and not for good reasons. King Herod is visited by some magi from the east, seeking the new king of Israel. And Herod and all of Jerusalem are shaken by the news Herod is shaken because he knows that he is not a legitimate king. He is not a descendant of David. He is a mere Roman puppet. Now, Herod is known for his violent actions to stay in power. He has his own sons killed and seeks to kill Jesus by having all the male babies in Bethlehem destroyed. Joseph again speaks no words, but is obedient to God. And Joseph takes his family in the middle of the night, packing everything up they can carry, and going to Egypt, following God's will. After living in Egypt for a short time, the word of God again comes to Joseph in a dream from an angel. The angel tells Joseph that Herod is dead and is safe to return to Israel. Joseph again speaks no words, but is obedient to God and moves his family to Israel. When Joseph heard that Herod's son was ruling over Judea, he was afraid. Now this is the first time that we see that Joseph has a reaction to the angel's instructions. Joseph is filled with fear. Now, sometimes fear can stand in the way of our own decision-making. Fear can make us freeze in our tracks. We can become gripped by fear and unable to act. But God does not let fear interfere with God's plans. Again, Joseph is worn in a dream, and he takes his family to Galilee, and he settles in Nazareth, fulfilling God's word and God's plan. 
God's plans are revealed again and again to ordinary people just like us through visions and dreams in the Scriptures. God's hand is seen fulfilling Scripture by operating the lives of Jesus and Joseph and Mary. And God sends angels to speak to Joseph and Mary. And the angels reveal God's plan, God's will. But it is up to Joseph and Mary. And it's up to us to act in accordance with God's will. Joseph and Mary are obedient. And God saves this holy family. And through that, through God's plan saves all of us from our sins. And that's the good news. The good news of this scripture is that God has planned all along for us and for our salvation. God has spoken to many people throughout history and revealed God's plans to them. And our scriptures reveal that God has saved us through this gift, this gift of his only son, Jesus, born to Mary and Joseph, in a stable, laid in a manger, 2,000 years ago in a little town, Bethlehem. How do we respond to this wonderful news of God's plans for us? Our response is to follow God's signs and the scriptures and visions given by God to find God's purpose. Joseph and Mary were obedient to God's word. They did not hesitate or question God. They embarked on long journeys from Israel to Egypt and back because God spoke to them. We have many opportunities to know God's plans for us. God sends us signs through scriptures and through many words that point to Jesus. We must have the eyes of faith to see these signs. So see God's dreams and make them your own. We can read the scriptures that tell us about Jesus the Holy Spirit has given us Scripture so that we can know all things about Jesus and God's plans for us. But we must have the ears of faith to hear it. So hear God's dreams and make them your own. Finally, we can go to God in prayer and receive God's visions for our lives. Jesus taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer that so we can know what God's will is for us. Receive God's dreams and make them your own. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.